Hey everybody, I just want to reach out to you real quick and do some comparisons here showing you basically some of the values of using some older technology that's actually really cheap and then turn around and realize that you're able to outperform NVMe RAM uh, style uh, storage which is very similar to SSD and here you see we have a standard chassis 700 series this would be the 20 series of Dell and very very robust system but it also carries a variety of different boot devices which if you look here you've got an SD card interface you have here the Oracle F40 SSD 400 gig drive setup and just give me a second here I'll show you some more okay so to start this off with you know we look at the slowest devices in the equation and here is probably one of the best examples here you have a PCI based SATA IDE internal 40 pin EID interface uh, controller and it's just a basic controller with a very basic SATA functionality two SATA interfaces and one IDE based that's believe it or not actually fairly slow then you have the USB 3.0 capacity and you can have the SSD RAM I'm sorry not SSD but the uh, SD card memory card in this case a Samsung 64 gig stick which could boot your operating system fairly okay I mean it's not quite, it's equivocable to an, you know, a base drive such as uh, SATA or IDE or EIDE uh, interface and then of course you've got the traditional 10,000 or 15,000 RPM hard drive that's an enterprise level drive and then you entered into, into the world of SSD a baseline SSD system that is really fast very capable functional it's not the greatest it's not the weakest but it, it definitely outperforms spinning disk then you have what is known as your higher end and that's NVMe 2 version 2 or better as you can see here, this particular NVMe is designed also with a heat sink to keep it cool. And coolness does help with the process. But what's below the fastest bus interface, the NVMe? Well, in this case, it's the F40 card. And this card is already set up to boot this machine into Windows 2019 in this particular configuration. It saw it immediately, and we're gonna post it here in just a second so I can show you how to get such a powerful server not using USB hard drive, uh, USB boot devices, not using SD cards, so we're gonna take that out, not using the SATA or the 15,000 or 10,000 RPM hard drive, and of course we would never use IDE or, or SATA 2 point versions like this at all. We'll get that out of the equation. We surely like NVMe because it's quite powerful and quite functional in, in its capacity. Uh, very high performer and as you can see it's sitting on a 4-bit structure so that's really great. High performance indeed. Well, we're going to use in this case two F40s. That's 800 gigs of capacity just off these two cards. And if you look in the back you will see how they post and boot and how they come up. So stand by for just a second while we work on the boot post process. Okay, so now that we have this server booting, and I apologize for the noise, but that's just part of life, um, we have here the back of the platform. Now all the hard drives in this platform are, un are removed from their bus connection so that we can basically use these two cards right here the two Oracle Sun F40 cards to post to the baseline operating system and in this case that baseline operating system would be server 2019 but as you can see down here now they're starting to post up you've got a green indicator saying power but you also have a boot process set in the BIOS saying okay I'm on standby mode ready to review and then of course as the operating system begins to reach its boot process you will start to see the performance on that so we'll get to that point in just a second now on this particular 
piece of hardware, we have also a Perk 710P mini card, which is a mini RAID card, a fully functional enterprise level interface card. Um, but the baseline outside of the cache 100 meg SSD card is zeroed out for all the RAID drives. So there are no active RAID drives at this time. And one of the thoughts are we can use the 710P to set each of the drives up as RAID 0 and then treat them as separate drives. Or we could formulate some RAID groupings and so on and so on. But I want to use this system to post in regards to working with NAS drives that I'm getting off of NetApps and EMCs and so on and so on and formatting them in bulk as you can see here is a NetApp hard drive that I've got on standby to be formatted and staged. The biggest challenge with recycling cheap efficient high-speed enterprise hard drives is you've got to flash them and you got to format them. So uh, recognizing them as devices and then flashing them and formatting them really works great when you got 24 bus card slots to work with. So in just a second here, we're going to see the environment post and we'll be able to get this machine up and running. All right, we've got, uh, we have a problem with one of our DIMMs, but it's not at risk because we're in paired ECC mode which means basically my DIMMs protect each other, just like RAID. So now we can see the Seagate Technology Warp Drive BIOS posting, and it's initiating. And at this level, you'll actually get the option to go in and use Control-C to just check the statuses of them. But there they are right now. You can see them. The principal first drive you use when you're installing an, an operating system is the first zero one one drive, um, in this case, uh, that zero controller and, and the first drive that's available. But you also notice that the PERC 710P is not configured. It has zero drive configurations and it's completely in the clear. Don't want to use the RAID controller just yet, but I will. Now we're actually getting ready to post into the firmware configuration. And once that firmware configuration finalizes, checks everything, you're going to see that right here, the drives are now in a green state. Now the lower ones are not yet, but they will be. They're just not in use. I only have one 100 gig drive allocated at this time. One other important, very, de uh, very important detail about booting the 720 XD Dell chassis is it does not like UFC, uh, UCF, EUCF boot bias mode. It wants to boot bias. If you do not use the bias boot mode and flip over to the U series, you are not going to be able to restart the server. You can just all you can do is power it off. And that's it. Now we've got we just hit into the boot process running on the SSD drive of the F40 card and it is coming up. And the card is rather impressive for its boot cycle in regards to booting the operating system. I didn't expect it to come up as quickly as it did and surprisingly based on the performance and review I'm seeing so far uh, there's just absolutely no hesitation in the system. So the challenge there is that we have to understand that in this very basic deployable format that you see here, um, we have a very solid little machine inside that, as you can see down here, is running pretty furiously up here. And yet none of the other buses are. And that is very good. So what I've got now is I have got to go ahead and, and post the system so that we can see what the disk configurations look like. And there's really only one thing you want to do here because you will have a backup solution in the equation and you should make a recovery disk, uh, although that is becoming more difficult over the days. 
But here you can see, there they all are, all of those disks. They're out there. Now, here is the common mistake that happens. Um, when you go into this environment and you want to basically build, you have to first bring the drives online. And once they're online, they're going to be usable in regards to how they're going to be scalable and how they are going to function. Now, there is a problem here. And that problem is, as I'm bringing these online, they're on two different controller interfaces. So what I mean is, I'm going to have eight 100 gig allocations, or 92 gigs each, four on this one and four on this one. So there is a potential serious mistake that is made by cross-bussing these cards. Cross-bussing basically means, okay, I want to look out there and I want to do some stuff, but... My problem is I want to basically set them up in such a way so that 0, 1, 2, 3 are, are the first four drives and they are only localized within the I.O. controller card. If we accidentally reach out and grab one or more of the additional disks on the second controller card, then you have to cross the bus, go up, and go over and back over and down over and over and over. Don't make that mistake. The key mistake here that everybody wants to avoid is that it is an important version and we want to make sure we don't make that mistake. Now stand by for a second. Now I took a little time to initiate the drives and things like that just to get them to the point where we get to the next stage. So at this point stage, now you can go in there and you can create a span set of disks that are going to be able to do what you want to do. Uh, so you start with number four here, and I want to create a span, a span set, which is going to include, you know, five, six, and seven. And then that drive becomes... Uh, basically a 400 gig allocation and uh, this will change the nature of these disks and formulate them basically as an extended single disk entity so with that being done when I go back up to my file manager and I want to basically confirm that I am good with the system it's ready for formatting as you can see here so I can go back into config and I can see that the disks are formatting and very shortly the D drive will come up ready to go. Now you noticed I did not use any of the disks on the first on the first HBA F4, F40 card because these are truly HBA devices, host bus adapter uh, drive devices, not RAID controllers. This is not RAID technology. Um, but it's the cleanest, neatest, and most capable HBA configuration uh, setup that I've ever seen, and I do really like it. I wish all HBA-based interface cards drove like this, not necessarily at the operating system level, um, but in the nature and the, and the performance IO8 states at which we see out there in the industry. So if we go down here, the formatting has caused a new reaction down here that is out of spec. Now, I have another very serious issue I have to be careful about, and that is I want to eventually span these disks into the 92 gig capacity so that I can have enough functional capacity so that I can have a fairly large style swap file. So I've got 112 gigs out there of RAM and 2.3 are right now currently committed. So I do want to have a bigger swap file, but when I only have 72 gigs of free space available, I have to be careful because it is an operating system drive. And as you can see there, it's 72.5 gig out of 92.5. Over here, we have our 372 gigs for our baseline platform, but it's basically built very similar to high-end speed platforms of the past. So what now 
And the F40 card is impressive. Um, it's the first really true uh, thought. I, I've worked with these cards quite a bit in data centers as accelerators between sand storage and localized storage based on RAM only. And they work really well at that capacity. But in this particular case, they really out, they really outdo themselves. I'm very impressed with them. And I like them. I'm going to get more. I might use them as the principalized boot drives devices for my servers because they are really, really better than SSD drives, but not quite as good as NVMe RAM style SSD drives. And I think that uh, you couldn't go wrong if you could find a couple of these cars you know, out there on the market for, let's say, I don't know, um, 30, 40, 50 bucks. They're worth it. The F80s are 800 gig allocations. Uh, instead of 400 gigs like these are, uh, or eight HBA device drives of 100 each. Uh, they're a little higher, about $100, $150. Also pretty nice, um, especially in regards to your boot environment. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Take care. Bye.